Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Brother F540E embroidery only sewing machine. So the Brother F540E is, as I said, an embroidery only machine. And um, it's a really good machine to start your embroidery journey if you're not quite sure about where you wanna go with this and, and, uh, and, and you know, what sort of machine to get. This is a great, a great entry level machine. Now the reason it's so good is it's what we call a standard large hoop machine. Now I, need, I do need to explain that in a little bit detail because the hoop size of, a, of an embroidery machine can be one of the most, um, the complicated things to understand in, in our industry. So large hoop, what does it mean? Well, this, if I go back to when embroidery machines first started in the home market, way back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, the hoop sizes were very small. And then, oh gee, about 1993, thereabouts, brother bought out the first large hoop machine, and this is the size of the hoop. Now, hopefully camera guy can see this, but we've got the little template in there. Um, I'll explain that in a moment, but this is a 5x7 or a 130x180 hoop size. And if I pop this little uh, template guide that comes with it, you might be able to see, camera guy can probably see that, it actually shows you the embroidery area of this particular hoop. And it's an important thing to know that when we talk about hoop size on a domestic embroidery machine or a home embroidery machine, we actually talk about the embroidery area. So this little grid does represent the, the area that you can stitch in. So. Um, it's a, it's a really accommodating hoop, and that's standard with this, this machine. This is the hoop that will come in the box. Now, I'm going to just show you, and this is not a standard hoop, but it is certainly available for this machine, but this is the, um, the smaller hoop that was the starting, that, that was the size back in the early 90s, and it's, it's a 100 by 100 hoop. So you can see there's quite a substantial difference between the two, if I just move that out the way there. So, um, that's your very small hoop, or a standard 100 by 100. This is the 130 by 180, so a very generous hoop size as a standard hoop for this machine. The, um, the other benefits that you're going to get with an embroidery only machine is that you can leave it set up, obviously, for embroidery. You don't have to sort of change it over from sewing to embroidery, which is common on the, uh, on the, the crossover machines or the combination machines. So, it's, um, it's set up to do a job and it does it really well. So what we're gonna do now is just go through what actually comes standard with the machine. Um, as I said, it's embroidery only, so there's not a lot of accessories needed other than it will come with a, a little dust cover, keep the dust off your machine when you're not using it. It will obviously come with instruction books and manuals and also a, a design guide. So it actually has 193 built-in embroidery designs with a load of, loads of shapes and fonts. I think there's 13 built-in fonts, but all that paraphernalia is included. No need to run through that right now. It's all in the box. And then there is a little bag of accessories, including some uh, bobbins and needles, and you, know, you don't need to see it all, really. It's, it is all there. There's scissors and, and all sorts of things. But it's not like a sewing machine where you've got all the different presser feet and everything that come with it. This comes with everything you need to do embroidery, and that's the most important thing. So. Um, when we look at the machine, it's an, it's an attractive machine. It's uh, quite a new model. I love the green tones on it. And uh, if we pop this fella up here, you'll see you've got all your threading path up here, your bobbin winding. And uh, this is what we're gonna go through quickly in this video, show you how easy it is to use, how easy it is to thread, how easy it is to load and customize the design and, uh, and actually get an embroidery result. One of the big advantages on this new model is that it actually is a Wi-Fi machine, so you can connect it up to your home Wi-Fi network, which means transferring designs from your computer to the machine is really, really simple. It is also a USB machine, so that's also super simple. You can load designs to a USB stick, plug it in the side, and really easy to, um, to get going with, uh, with oh, gee, there's millions of embroidery designs available, so um, simple process to get designs to the machine. It, um, it also has a new feature in this price range of machines, which is really quite extraordinary. It has what we call jump stitch trimming, and I'm gonna practically show you what that means later. But for anyone who's been embroidering for a long time, you know what it's like when you finish a design and you have all these jump stitches all over, and sometimes they're caught in previous stitching, um, and you've gotta sit there and trim them out. Well, jump stitch trimming helps eliminate all those little problems there. Again, let's have a look at the machine now. 
physically. Um, you'll notice it's got a beautiful color screen here and I'm going to grab my little stylus here. Hopefully I won't get in the way of camera guy. So right now I've turned the machine on, the embroidery unit is attached and of course being that it's embroidery only, you rarely need to take this off. The only time you would do that is if you were storing the machine, but uh, otherwise you just leave it attached and it just clips on and off, it's very simple. I'm using a stylus here, but you can use your fingers. You won't hurt the screen by touching it with your fingers. Um, I'm going to use a stylus mostly because I don't want to get my hands in the way while I'm showing you what's on screen. So um, we'll just click that there. So there, the machine is all set up. You can see this is a, about a 3.7 inch diagonal screen, full color, nice and easy to use. So we're going to run through that in a few moments. Some other functions there for your um, getting into your help screens and, and, and so on. So we'll come through that in a moment. Let's have a look at what other buttons we've got. We've got a uh, trimming button. So this has trimmers. It will cut the thread for you. So uh, when you finish a color or a block of stitching, it will trim the thread for you and you can manually trim um, using this button any, anywhere through a design. You've also got an automatic needle up down button. You've got your on and off button here and uh, you'll notice that there's all sorts of numbers here. They're the threading guides. We're going to go through those in a moment. You've got your bobbin winding section up there and you've also got an automatic needle threader over on the side here. So first things first, let's look at how we go about threading this machine. So threading the machine, the first thing we need to do is obviously get a bobbin threaded. Now there's multiple options you've got with bobbins. You can buy pre-wound bobbins like this little guy right here. Hopefully camera guy can see that. That is a standard a style plastic pre-wound bobbin and um, worth noting that this this machine does use an A style or a class 15 bobbin and uh, pre-wound bobbins are very readily available. If you would like to wind your own bobbin it's also very very simple. The benefits of winding your own bobbin is you'll probably be a little bit cheaper than buying pre-wounds but you can also wind your own bobbins with whatever color thread you want. So there are circumstances where having the same color thread on the bobbin as on the top, uh, it can be quite handy, particularly if you're making lace, etc., like that. So let's have a look at winding a bobbin. Um, I'm going to use this spool of Hemingworth bobbin fill and uh, Hemingworth's a great product. You'll notice, if the camera guy can see that, Hemingworth comes with the clear plastic cap system and um, I've already pulled the thread through there. So the thread just simply comes out of the top of the spool like that. And to wind a bobbin, the bobbin thread will sit on the spindle here. Now you'll notice that I've also got this little thread cap. And this thread cap is designed to hold spools of thread on the actual spindle here. But a little tip, when you're using the Hemingworth thread, you don't need to use that. So we can move that out the way there. I'm just sim simply going to take the bobbin fill, pop it on there like that. And because the plastic cap is still on there, or the, the clear plastic dome is still on there, it means the thread can't tangle or get caught anywhere. It's a really great feature on the Hemingworth thread. Now, bobbin winding is simple. It's a matter of following the numbers and it's the dotted line that we're going to follow to thread the bobbin. So all I've got to do is pull the thread into number one. Hopefully camera guy can follow me here. I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. There's number two up here. So we come up to there. There's number three, just there. So down into that little section there and then around the little tension. Now there's a tiny little bobbin tension device there. So at that point, we just make sure we pull the thread into the little spindle. I do need to take the, um, my bobbin, which is still in the machine. So I'll grab that out. This is an empty bobbin. And we're going to pop that on the bobbin spindle just there. Now pull the bobbin thread across and the guide tells me to wrap it from the back around there like that. And what I really love about these bobbin winders is they have a little trimming function on the bobbin winder itself. It's a little catch just here. Camera guy hopefully will get that if I just get my finger in there. And right there, we just pull that thread and that holds it for when the bobbin actually starts winding. Now in order to wind the bobbin, all we need to do now is flick the bobbin across to the right. The light has now gone orange, which means it's now ready to wind the bobbin and all I've got to do is hit the wind button and that's now winding the bobbin for us. Now, you can either fill the bobbin or you can stop it. If you only need a little bit of thread, just stop it whenever you want. Um, in this case, I'm going to um, let it fill the bobbin and the reason I'm doing that is there's a little guide right here that allows you to adjust the amount of bobbin thread that it might fill to if you wanted to sort of set that yourself. But it's always right out of the box, so you rarely ever need to adjust that. But there is a screw in the top there, which is a user setting. And um, so winding your own bobbins is very simple. They do wind very evenly as long as you've threaded it correctly and you're using good quality bobbin thread. 
then winding and bobbin is super, super simple. Now a little tip here guys, if you have some of these old pre-wound bobbins, uh, or, or pre-wound bobbins, they're a single use bobbin, I don't recommend rewinding those. Always use the bobbins that came with the machine or the, the reusable bobbins that we sell whenever you're winding bobbin thread. And uh, definitely use a good quality thread. It makes the world of difference. So that's almost finished. In fact, if I felt I had enough there, I could just hit that stop button right there and take it off at any given time. So for example, if you were embroidering uh, with a specific color, but you only had a little job to do, you don't need to fill the bobbin with, with red thread or whatever color it is you're using if you're only needing a little bit, just stop it whenever you want. Once you've done that, just flick that back to the left and uh, take the bobbin thread off. I've got a, pair, a little pair of scissors here. I'll just trim that and there's our bobbin nicely wound. So threading the bobbin into the machine. You'll notice as we look down here, hopefully camera guy can get a good close up of this. It's a drop in bobbin and it's a quick set bobbin, the Brother quick set bobbin, which is fantastic. There is a little guide on the front of the plate right there showing you which way the bobbin sits in the bobbin holder. And it's just a matter of dropping that in and the bobbin will actually spin anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. So you simply drop the bobbin in there like so hook it into the little slot just here, pull the thread around, and uh, there's a little cutter just here, and just cut that off, and that's it. Bobbin is threaded nice and simple. Pop the little gray cover back on, making sure you've slotted it in underneath the little spring, and that's now threaded. So it doesn't get any simpler than that, does it? And I don't need to draw the bobbin thread up to start embroidering. I can just leave that there, it's ready to go. So let's take a look at threading the machine because it's equally as magical. Now I'm going to take this bobbin thread away. One of the nice things about the Hemingworth spool is I just pop that little plastic or silicon stopper back in there and that won't unravel. That'll be kept nice and neat over there. I'll get rid of that last little bit of bobbin thread that I have. I don't need that. Now I'm going to pop some thread on there. Again, I'm using the Hemingworth spool. Um, it's uh, got the cap on it. So we just take that little silicon stopper out. We just pop that on here. Now, threading the machine, it's really simple. You're following the solid line now, not the dotted line. Nice and easy. So we enter the machine at number one. We come down under here. Number two takes us around there. Number three takes us down to the bottom of the take-up area. Now, a little tip, guys. Whenever you're threading a machine, you must always thread with the presser foot in the up position. That goes for every machine on the market. Always thread with the presser foot up. In fact, these guys have a little trap door that, or a little um, uh, lock, if you like, that it won't let you thread it if you don't have the presser foot in the up position. So up position, so we come down, we go under number three. Now there's a take up lever in here. And so we come across to the left. That will pick up the take up lever. Thread must be in the take up lever. If it's not, you'll, it won't work. And you could even jam your machine up. So you make sure you're in the take up lever. At that point, I always like to give the thread a bit of a pull. So I grab the thread here and I just give it a little bit of a pull down there. And that just makes sure that my thread has gone into the tension correctly. And um, just a little bit of insurance, if you like. There's number five right there. So we come down and number six is on the needle bar. Hopefully camera guy can see this. Right there's number six. And number seven is just here. So we just come up to number seven. And then there's a little cutter on the side of the machine. So if I can pull that down there cut that off. We've now all but threaded the needle and here's one of the magic features on this machine, the automatic needle threader. It's brilliant. It's been a brother special for so long now and it's very, very reliable. I like to put the presser foot down at that point and then all I've got to do is push this lever down firmly and positively all the way down and the needle is now threaded. How easy is that? If you blink, you miss it. Um, but you can rewind the video if you like and watch that again. Really simple, but you'll see the thread is now perfectly through the needle eye. I uh, should point out these machines use standard domestic flat back needles. And, um, and of course, we do recommend using the embroidery needle. Uh, the, uh, either Generally, a size 7511 is what you're going to use for most things, but it's a standard needle, very easily available. and. Um, and being a flat back needle, it's very simple to change the needle. You really can't do it wrong at all. So that's now threaded. 
All we've got to do now is put a hoop in place. Now I'm just going to take a hoop that I've already popped some fabric in and we have loads of videos showing you about hooping techniques and all sorts of things which, um, which you can watch as you're getting into this embroidery journey. But I've just got a piece of uh, uh, just a, a cotton fabric in there and a piece of a backing. So uh, you do need backing when you're embroidering. This is in the standard five by seven hoop. And to load that hoop, I simply need to make sure the presser foot is up, slide the hoop under the foot, and uh, camera guys should be able to see that there. Hopefully there's two little um, notches there if you like, and they actually clip over two little pins on the embroidery unit right there. So all I've got to do is locate those. Now again, I'm sort of working at a disadvantage on the, uh, on the other side of the hoop, uh, of the machine. So you've just got to click those into place, push it down, and there we go, that's all locked in. There is a little release lever right here, so that helps you just release and put the hoop on. But the hoop is now in place and ready to be stitched on. So next, we're going to take a look at the screen and how we could load a design and a bit of text. So this is where the magic all starts. The, uh, the color screen here is really simple to use. Brother are so famous for uh, a, an interface or a user interface that works so flawlessly, easily, and so easy to understand. So when you start the machine up, this is the opening screen that will um, come up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a design and, and put some text around it. But as I do that, I'll go through the various functions and, and just how easy it is to use this screen. Um, first things first, you've got a couple of design menus so if I was to click on that design menu and then that one there, it will actually give me, this has got 13 pages of design. So I can scroll through from page to page. If I want a particular design, I simply just select it and hit set and, and move forward. Um, if I don't want that one, I can uh, just keep scrolling through, choose the design I want. You'll, you'll definitely get a good feel for what the designs are. In fact, it even tells me the size of the design I've selected and what hoop I could use to actually stitch that out. Um, yeah, as I said, um, 193 designs built into this machine, but of course there are millions available online, so there's no shortage of designs. And you can even get software and create your own designs if you particularly want to. Now, if I want to go back to my main menu, click that button, then I could click on this menu, and that now has another seven pages of various styles of designs. And remember, there is a design guide in the, in the box, so you'll be able to see in color just what's on the machine and that design guide also has all the color sequencing on it for you as well. So we'll go back again then there's this menu here that takes you into another 14 pages of design. So you're really uh, taking this machine out of the box you're up and ready to go with designs that are built in straight away you don't have to uh, have anything else to get going. So let's just go back to there we've also got some lovely motifs and monograms so um, these are big monograms that virtually fill the hoop two different styles there and I think there's 13 different font options in here. So we've got loads of great fonts and they're scalable. So you can, and we're gonna load some of those in a moment. So you'll see how easy that is to do. Um, you've also got shapes and borders. So you can choose any of these shapes if you wanted to create a lovely heart stitch with decorative um, edging around it, you can do that. Uh, again, loads of stuff built in. Right now though, I'm going to load a design and we're gonna create a little um, happy birthday kind of design. So I know the design I want is actually in the butterfly menu and I'm just gonna scroll through there and we'll grab one of these numbers. I'm gonna take number five for instance. Now, the good thing here is I can now see the size of that design in reference to my embroidery area. So it's quite a big design and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with that design. Now I want to add the words happy birthday and all I've got to do is hit set. Um, you'll notice here at this stage I've got options. I can move the design around. So if I hit the move button I can use the arrows to move the design on screen. I can auto center it or I can even just click and drag and move that around on screen with my stylus. Um, but you know what, I want that to be nice and centered, so I'll leave it in the center. And um, I can resize the design, but with, with embroidery designs, resizing on the machines, a little bit limited on these models, you really don't want to go much more than 5%, 10% at top. So I don't recommend resizing designs other than just a smidgen if you need to. You do have a rotate function, and you do have the ability to go through and change colors on the design as well. So um, we don't need to do that right now. So we'll just go OK to that and go back. Um, I can mirror image. Now, obviously, you wouldn't mirror image a number five. But if you want to mirror image any other designs, you can. And, um, and of course, I could delete that one if I didn't want to use that and change my mind. I do want to now add some text. So if I click on the Add button, 
and then go to my text file here. I can choose um, one of the different 13 fonts that I've got. I might just stick with a pretty basic font there for the moment. And I want to type in the word happy. Um, in fact, I'm going to make happy birthday happy around the top and birthday around the bottom, and it's really simple. So all I need to do is select H. Now I'm going to go down to a medium size, and now I want to go lowercase. So that was an uppercase H. And um, if I scroll across, there's a lowercase a, and I want a lowercase p, there it is, I want two of those, and a lowercase y. So we just scroll across to there. And now I'm going to hit the set button on that, and uh, you'll see, camera guy hopefully can see that, the word happy is right in the middle there, and I want to now move that. Now I can click and drag it, or I can hit my move options, and I can move it that way. Sometimes using the move, uh, the panel to move, or the little arrows is a little bit more accurate and easier. I'm going to click OK. Now I want to do some magic. I want to make that word happy in a nice arc. So I've got font editing. So if I go to font edit, and if I go to array, I can arc that around. There we go. That's what I want. And um, I might just move that down a little bit. There's my word happy. OK, I'm really happy with that. And let's click OK. And now I want to add the word birthday. So we just go add. And I'm going to choose, I could choose a different font if I want to. Let's do that. Let's go B. I want a medium size. And then I want a lowercase I. And a lowercase R. And a lowercase T. Lowercase H. Lowercase D. A. And then, of course, a Y. So let's do that and go set. So there's my word birthday underneath, and I could move that down to there, but I want to arc that the other way now. So all I've got to do is go into Font Edit, Array, and this time we'll go up that way. And we'll just move that to where we want that. Uh, it looks pretty good. Now I can also change the angle of the arc. It's a bit like word art for your embroidery machine. It's really cool, and you've got lots of different options there. But I'm happy with what I see there. And if I click OK, and OK again, my design is now ready. And if I go to hit Edit End, I can still move it around in the screen, but now I can move the whole design. So if I know exactly where I want it to stitch on the fabric, I can move it to that location. This machine also has a really cool feature called color sorting. So if I was stitching black, say I had the word happy, and then I stitched the five, and then I stitched the word birthday, and I thought, well, that's a bit silly. I don't need to have an extra color change. If I hit the color sort button, it will make all the same colors stitch um, at the same time. So you don't need to um, you don't need to have as many color changes. Now I do stress um, good designs when they're digitized, they're they're created in a sequence, and I don't recommend always color sorting, you know, designs. It's more for when you've got independent independent objects on the page. It's quite handy. Um, and that's it. That's now ready to stitch. So if I hit the embroidery mode, uh, or before I do though, camera guy might be able to see this. I can actually see exactly where this design is going to stitch out. If I hit the trace button and trace the design, the frame will actually move around the perimeter of where the design is about to stitch out. So it's pretty simple to see where it's going to go. And um, that's it there. So I know I'm happy with where that's positioned, but I can still move it if I wish to. If I wanted to save this design, let's just say you've spent a bit of time creating a design, I could hit the memory button here and I could save it either back to my USB stick or back to, uh, uh, via Wi-Fi, back to uh, my computer or directly into the machine. I, I don't need uh, to save this, so we'll just go back there and now hit the embroidery mode and we are now ready to go. The first color is Carmen and um, We'll start stitching it out and we'll come back the other side.
All right, so there we are. We finished stitching the design, so let's take it out and have a, a bit of a look-see at it. Now to release the, uh, the hoop, you just pull back on the little tab there, and that will just pop straight up for you. Lift the presser foot, and there's our design all stitched out. Now, I want to talk about um, the jump stitch trimming and, and just show you what that actually means. So if you've never embroidered before, you're probably thinking, well, what's this jump stitch all about? I'll show you. Here's a, the, exactly the same design I've stitched on a machine with, which does not have jump stitch trimming. Now, camera guy might need to help me here. I think we have we got those in focus, camera guy? Yep. So the one on the right, let's just point to that. I'll see if I can hold those there. Can you see here we've got these little trimming or jumps here from the, the letters across to the next letter. We've got uh, threads here that are jumping from each colour because the machine that I stitched this out on, the previous model, didn't have automatic jump stitch trimming. So every time it had to move from, let's say, that little heart there across to that bit of blue there, the same colour, instead of trimming the thread, it actually just moved across. And you have to go back after the event with your scissors and actually trim all those threads off or you stop the machine every time there's a jump stitch and you actually trim it during that process. And of course, that's just time consuming and inconvenient really and it's equally as inconvenient trimming it after the event so if you can get a machine with jump stitch trimming absolutely definitely worth it and you won't have all these little trims here and here that um, that cause you some uh, some inconvenience the worst thing about jump stitches though is sometimes if you're not careful they'll get stitched in underneath the next row of stitching and you could imagine if you were had a black thread um, caught under a, a white um, layer of stitching, you, you might see that through the design, which can be really frustrating. So that's what jump stitch trimming is. Definitely worth having it. Uh, end result is great stitch out. That's just a built-in design, a little bit of built-in text. There are literally millions of designs available for embroidery though. And as I said earlier, you can get your own software, you can create your own if you wish to go down that path. But recapping on this machine, um, value for money, it's excellent. Uh, it's a brother, of course, you know it's going to work. Five-year computer warranty, three-year mechanical warranty, colour screen, um, big large hoop, five by seven hoop, and uh, full metal chassis. It's got a bit of weight to it. It's not going to bounce around the table. It's pretty quiet as well, so it's, uh, you know, it's not going to be too obtrusive in your home. Um, metal needle plates, metal uh, bobbin cover, uh, generally speaking, uh, just a nice looking machine. But most importantly, being a brother, it's very, very simple to use. And I, and I should also point out that um, there are help menus in the screen as well. So you've got all sorts of little help options there. And what's more, there's a QR code on the top here. So if you point your phone to that or your mobile device, that will take you to the brother support pages where you can get loads of assistance there as well. And of course, you can always contact Echidna and look at the videos that we have on our website, uh, whether it be for the machine or for embroidery techniques or whatever it is. But um, uh, a great machine if you're starting your embroidery journey and one that um, you'll certainly enjoy and uh, just have a lot of fun with. So I hope you found this little video um, helpful, interesting, and um, until next time, happy embroidering. <laughs>